OK, so what we've seen so far is how we can add fractions together, algebraic fractions together, to make one well, big fraction, effectively. Now, the usefulness of that big fraction really depends on what you want to do with it. In some cases, if you had something that looked like this, 7x minus 16 over x minus 3x minus 2, OK? Um, looking ahead to what you could do with that, well, if it was a graph that you wanted uh, to sketch, so y equals that, then you have a lot of information that you can garner from it. OK, that's useful. Um, but if you wanted to integrate it, however, that's actually quite tough to do. And you can't algebraically integrate that unless you break it apart and put it back into what we refer to as its partial fractions. Now, it's not just used for integration. It's also used for uh, binomial expansion. So if you wanted to expand this and get um, a binomial expansion approximation for this curve, then you would have to use this method of partial fractions as well. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways of doing partial fractions. Uh, the first in this method, uh, first in this video, um, is going to be the method uh, via substitution. Now, this is my preferred method of how to do it. And this is the way that I will use throughout this set of videos. In the next video, I'm going to do exactly the same example, but using the second alternative method of comparing coefficients, which you, it's, you're free to go ahead and use that method throughout if you wish. OK, uh, it's perfectly up to you. So how does this work? Well, from our knowledge of um, from our knowledge from before of adding two fractions together, if this had been two separate fractions that I was adding together, then it makes sense that one of them was a fraction that had x minus 3 as its denominator, and the other one had x minus 2 as its denominator. So it makes sense that this is precisely the same as some number over x minus 3 plus some number over x minus 2. These were the two original fractions that I would have added together to make the 7x minus 16 over x minus 3x minus 2. I just don't know what the a and the b are. Now, this symbol here, if you haven't come across it, is the equivalence symbol. So it's like an equal sign. However, um, what it's saying is that this side is equal to this side for all values of x. It is always the same. OK? Now, if you just have something like um, x squared minus 3 equals 2x plus 1, for example, OK, this is not an equivalence. Otherwise, what you would be saying is that x squared minus 3 is always the same and so has exactly the same shape as 2x plus 1, which of course they don't. This one can be solved. Okay? There are particular values of x that this works for, but a lot that it doesn't. This one works for all values of x. I'm saying that the left-hand side is precisely the same as the right-hand side. So it's a stronger bond than an equals actually is. Now, this method of substitution takes the first step, as it would if you were comparing coefficients, using the second method, by multiplying everything 
by the x minus 3, x minus 2. Okay? So what happens is that we get, if I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 3, x minus 2, then this fraction here will just become 7x minus 16. Okay? Because if I multiply this by x minus 3, x minus 2, then it knocks out the denominator. Effectively, they both cancel. Now, if I multiply this by x minus 3, x minus 2, then the x minus 3s will cancel. But the x minus 2 won't. So I will still have a lots of x minus 2. If I multiply this by x minus 3, x minus 2, the x minus 2s will cancel, but the x minus 3 will stay where it is. And so I have reduced it to this line. This is much easier to work with. It is from this point that the two methods differ. OK? Right. So the method of substitution says that, well, if the left-hand side is precisely the same as the right-hand side, then, and it, that must be true for all values of x, then I should be able to just substitute in values of x. It won't change uh, anything, OK? But I can use and substitute in values of x to make this simpler for myself, because I need to work out the values of a and b. So if I substituted in 3, for example, it'll eliminate that bracket for me, because I'll have 3 take away 3, which will make 0. So if I let x be 3, then I get 7 lots of 3 is 21. Take away 16 is 5. And now, now I've, I've put an equal sign here rather than an equivalency symbol, OK? Um, because now this is reducing it to an equation. x equals 3 goes into this, and I have 3 take away 2, which is 1. So I have 1 lot of a. And the b has disappeared because it's been multiplied by 0. And so I found that a is 5. Now, with that in mind, I now need to work out what b is. So if I substitute in 3 here for this one, if I substitute in 2, I can eliminate that bracket. So let x equal 2. So I get 7 lots of 2 is 14. Take away 16 is minus 2. 2 take away 2 is 0, so that term disappears. And 2 take away 3 is minus 1, so I get minus b. So if minus 2 is minus b, then b must be 2. Therefore, I now have the a and the b. So I can write 7x minus 16 over x minus 3x minus 2 as being the same as 5 over x minus 3 plus 2 over x minus 2. Okay? And that is how part the method of partial fractions work using the substitution method.